Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to check out the Samsung Ultra Wide monitor, 34 inch monitor. We're going to see the capabilities, we're going to try different applications on it, and see what it can do for you. And you can see just how much you can fit on the one screen, all the things you love. Right? Sure. And you? Oh yeah. Sure. Let's go. You see before you the rather large box for the Samsung WQHD monitor, 34 inch widescreen monitor. We're going to break this box open and see what we got inside. Alright, so let's break the seal and see what we have inside here. Very large box, I must say. Okay. Here we are. So. First things first, power supply, which is uh, a good thing, of course. And next, we have the instructions and looks like a HDMI cable and some other miscellaneous paperwork. Here is, I don't know, looks like a uh, mounting bracket or maybe an input. Um, device of some sort. This is the base. And finally, the star of the show here. Okay. Hey, that's nice. Unless you can see all that, I'll hold it sideways here. Very large. Uh, on the back side, we have the uh, input area here. And if you look closely, we have two HDMI. Looks like one display port. And I'm not sure what the other two are. We'll go through and uh, try those out and see what that is. So to put the base on, it's pretty straightforward. We have the major part of the base here, and the stem. You slide the stem in. On the other side then, there's some screws. Go ahead and uh, screw those in. And then this base part slides into the bottom of the TV here like so. And that's it. So we're going to get this set up in the office and we'll take a look at it. So my previous setup with the computer was using the uh, Sony 32 inch TV with the full HD resolution of 1920 by 1080. I use the same TV for work, for browsing, gaming, video editing, photography, everything. Here you can see the new monitor in front of the old TV. It's a, it's a lot wider, a little bit shorter. The resolution is significantly greater at 3440 by 1440. So that's a lot more detail in a, in a wider space. So that should be quite good. The monitor aspect ratio is 21.9 and it does allow you to tilt the monitor back a little bit to enhance your viewing angle. This diagram here kind of shows you the difference in resolution. That's where I'm coming from was the, the TV with the full HD 1920 by 1080 and now the 3440 by 1440 ultra widescreen. Here are some specs for this monitor. The MSRP for this monitor is $429.99. This monitor has two HDMI inputs and one DisplayPort input. Now for me that's not nearly enough and I'll show you how to get around that later. But um, I did try to use an adapter, HDMI to DisplayPort adapter for the DisplayPort input, and it would not work, even with DisplayPort 1.1 or 1.2. It still didn't work, so I found that a little strange. So where do I begin with this monitor? First of all, it's beautiful. The, the colors are rendered very well. It's very bright. Uh, it's basically two screens, you know, two separate monitors side by side in a way. So it really handles multiple applications very well. In this case here, like you're doing video editing, that kind of thing, it's perfect for that where you can have your uh, results window on one side and your uh, work area on the other. Um, you can even just have it playing, watch a video while you're doing a spreadsheet, etc, etc. So you get the idea, but basically you have so many options here. 
um, if you want to watch a particular video in the, you know on the side again while you're working or do full screen it's beautiful the video here of this screen is not you know nearly as good as it looks in real life it's hard to capture that from a video but trust me it's really really nice looking very sharp very bright and uh, does does the job well I was a little naive to think that the monitor would have speakers, but it did not. Again, coming from the TV world, I wasn't thinking about that when, when I got a hold of this. I just picked up the Logitech desktop speakers and plugged them into the headphone jack in the back, and it, it works very well. So with a resolution of uh, 3440 by 1440, you have a lot of room to work with here. So you can get these windows pretty big, very easy to see, and you know allow you to, again, do one thing on one side, just enjoy some video or TV show, whatever the case may be, and, and do your work on the other. It's, it's quite handy. It's, uh, you're saving a lot of space by having just one monitor here, but it can do the job of two. Okay, So I found that really useful especially when doing um, work or uh, web application development that kind of thing you want to have your uh, database windows open on one side and your your uh, visual studio ide on the other doing your uh, coding it's it's quite handy um, you can probably tell from some of these images how how sharp it is it is uh very detailed very nice looking monitor but I don't know how else to show you more examples of, of what you can do at the same time, but you can basically do anything you want as long as your uh, graphics card and computer can handle it. Another nice feature of the monitor is uh, the capability to do picture by picture and picture in picture. So here I'm going to show you the, uh, the picture in picture capability. I have a uh, Roku hooked up to one of the other inputs, so again there's two HDMI's in the back. And then I'm running um, some TV feed through the second the second input there. So, so you can see on the bottom right corner there, it's TV, live TV going on in the uh, second window. So right now, the, uh, the, the audio is coming from the, uh, the PC area, but you're able to change the sound source. So now there, you can change it to the uh, Roku device, the second HDMI input and then you can uh, watch your TV program there always in the corner while you're doing your work which is quite nice so it handles both of those feeds simultaneously without any problem without any struggle uh, and they both work very very well I've been very impressed with how how well that works so there are different sizes of uh, the screen that you can do from the second input source so here I'm going to increase the size It'll stay in the bottom right corner, but as you can see after the refresh here, it's about 30% or so bigger. So you have different options for how big. I think that's the biggest when it's not side by side that you can have in one of the corners of the screen. So next I'm going to show you how you can basically uh, change the position of the second input window. So here I'm rotating around and I can put it now in the top right corner, as you can see. And you have options for top left and uh, bottom left as well. So you can use any of the four corners of your monitor for this uh, second input stream. You'll notice here the uh, picture in picture screen has priority on the, of the screen. It's on top so your computer or your other source will be underneath it. So you just have to work around that area. So we looked at the picture in picture capabilities here for this monitor. Now we're going to show you the uh, picture by picture which is a side by side display of your two HDMI or, or display port imports so on one side you have in, in my case on one side I have HDMI 1 displaying my computer and on the right side is HDMI 2 uh, using my uh, live TV stream and again you have the capability to switch the inputs the sound input uh, between the two so you can listen to sound from one or the other but uh, you have the entire desktop on the left everything uh, all the windows in one screen and then the TV running on the other side so a lot of people will find this very useful I think to uh, do their work on a so-called normal size screen on the left and then uh, have the TV going on the right or if you prefer you can overlay picture-in-picture -picture as we displayed before 
having it just sitting in the corner of your entire display. So the monitor comes with two HDMI inputs and in my opinion with all the gadgets here that's not enough. So I was concerned about that but I came up with a solution. I just have a simple HDMI switch box. So here I can switch from my Roku to your uh, favorite video game system. In this case uh, it's the PlayStation 4. And then you're able to uh, play the PlayStation in the picture-in-picture -picture window there on the side. And the results are, are stunning. It really is. Uh, I picked the, this game here, Wipeout, uh, which is very rich in color and action and speed. So as you can see here, once it starts going, this is uh, rendered very well. Uh, no glitching, no slowdown. And all the while here you have your uh, other input fully operational. You can work your, uh, your PC windows there with no problem. So it works very well together. And these are just two of the uh, types of inputs you can use, the, the TV and the PlayStation. There's the possibilities are endless, really. Anything with the HDMI or DisplayPort you can use in the, uh, these picture-in-picture -picture windows. Here's an example. If you really want to tax your brain, you can have a, a video running in the background there and try to play the game at the same time. As you can see, it's not very effective with my driving technique here. But uh, again, whatever you desire with this monitor and these multiple inputs, you're able to do it simultaneously on the same screen. So now let's say we want to get out of picture in picture here and we want to go full screen with our sources. So you just turn the picture in picture mode off and after a little bit of you'll get your PC back. And then I go to search for source. So you can change inputs and surf, search for the next source. And I find this process a little slow. Uh, it's a nitpick, I know. But it's searching for the next source, in this case the PlayStation. And then you have the uh, full screen view of that, which is, again, very beautiful, very fast. The um, analog stick or the, the, the way to change inputs, the way to change brightness and, and basically do the setup of your monitor is behind the right side of the monitor on the bottom as you've seen my hand go back there several times to change inputs and whatnot. Um, I don't particularly care for that personally. I know this is not a TV but I should, surely a, a remote of some sort would really be amazing in this case. I think it would improve the, the, the quality of the product immensely but uh, that's just my opinion. I mean, most monitors don't have that. They don't have sound, etc. But that, that would be a really nice thing. Coming from the TV world, which I had for as my computer monitor and everything else for so long, I would love to have remote to do the uh, input changes and the configuration of the screen, etc. Just to note, I, I haven't changed any of the color settings. Uh, it's all basically how it comes default. So. Uh, you do have a lot of options in your menus to go ahead and make changes there, but I haven't messed with that at all. I just left it as is, and to me, it uh, looks very good. Let's talk about another feature of this monitor that you can use. It's called Easy Setting. It's some software you can download. It allows you to change kind of a way to break up the screen. So you could break up the screen in sections and then modify those sections too to your liking. So you have, in this case, three, two on the left and one on the right side. And then after you specify that, you can take your applications and simply drag them into the quadrant there that you have uh, predefined. So if you want, like to have two windows, uh, top and bottom, and then a big one on the right to do your work, uh, it snaps in place for you. It's a lot easier than, than resizing the windows. Additionally, with each window, you can say, I want to move it to a particular quadrant by selecting it, and it moves over there for you. So I find it interesting. Um, I'm not sure I would personally use this, but for some people who have many, many screens going on at once, they want to keep track of everything, uh, they have a lot of options here to make that work. When I was doing this uh, experiment here, I did have some trouble with some screens not popping into the uh, particular area that I had defined. So I'm not sure why that is, but maybe... Uh, Maybe it was something wrong at that moment, but um, overall it, it does allow you to uh, specify the easy setting and then move those particular windows into the quadrant that you want. Interesting stuff for some. For me, maybe not so much. Hey, thanks for joining me on the review of the Samsung 34-inch widescreen monitor. Oh, how you doing? 
I really enjoyed reviewing the product. I really think it's a, it's a great monitor. It's really going to be a good fit for me. Only I had a couple nitpicks, but those are pretty small. One being the number of inputs, and I gave you a workaround for that with the HDMI splitter, and hopefully that will meet your needs. If you'd like to see future videos like this, please subscribe to Skyrim Productions, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Skyrim Productions.